how do we properly machine this Picatinny rail? Let's show some do's and don'ts and walk through the process. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So this was a file that was sent in from one of the folks that supports us on Patreon. And he said, hey, John, having some problems, uh, wanted to understand uh, how to do this correctly. I he was trying, I think, a ball end mill strategy uh, here on the adaptive. So let's rewind a second. I want to uh, pick on him a little and go back into the model environment. And you'll notice he's not working in a component. We really want to do this. So you can convert an existing body to a component by right clicking on the body and say create components from body. So now I've got this thing which I'll just call rail and in it are my bodies and if we had sketches the sketches would be in there as well. It makes it so much easier and it'll help you even on the cam side. Another thing is this part, I believe, came from GrabCAD. And it's one of the things I don't like uh, with Fusion 360 is the default. When you import a file like this, or if somebody emails you a, a step file or an IGES file, is right-click on the file name, Capture Design History. When I turn that on, the timeline along the bottom shows up, which turns it into parametric modeling. For all of you watching these videos, doing any sort of engineering CAD work, please, you want to be in, in parametric modeling. The alternative is called direct modeling. It has its purposes, but usually not for us. And you can always go from parametric to direct. You can't go from direct. It's destructive editing. So like if I hit C for circle and create a circle on this thing and extrude it down, um, I can't see my circle for some reason. Here we go. Um, Everything I've just done there are events in the timeline where I can go along and edit them. Whereas destructive modeling, you just end up with a hole. There's no way to go back and edit it and link it and so forth. Okay, so I've got it in a, and you'll see why that's actually helpful in this video, by the way, parametrically. So it's in a component. I'll hop into cam. So we're going to do this with a chamfer end mill because it's a 45 degree angle and that's the absolute right way to do this. Um, however, if you wanted to use a ball end mill, let's take a look at how we would do that. So I'll, I'm not going to worry. Oh, here's a trick too. Sorry. When you convert a body into a component, you'll sometimes lose it in the setup. This is a good general fusion tip. If you aren't getting tool pass anymore and you kind of have one of those WTF moments, right click on setup edit, make sure there's something here. See how it says nothing? It doesn't know what we're trying to machine. So by clicking on here, and I can either click on the part, sometimes it's better or safer to go up here in your screen, expand the component, and expand the body here, and I'll click on the body itself. Oh, come on, there it is, the body one. That tells me what I'm trying to machine. I've got to edit the setup real quick. So the z-axis will be here, y-axis would be here, and flip that, and whoops. There we go, and I'll put it in the back corner. Okay, <laughs> raise your hand if you want to see a video on solving work coordinate origin uh, points. I'd be happy to do one on it. Okay, let's make sure we got our tool paths working here. Well, I'm not going to worry about these for now. They were other parts of the video, or his part. Okay, so he's got this adaptive here. Let's do a new 3D adaptive. And we're going to do a new tool. By the way, this is Friday. I'm filming this ahead of time. I think the new tool library, or a new tool library interface comes out today. I'm excited. I got a little sneak preview of it. Um, we'll see what it looks like. Let's assume it's a 3 8 inch ball end mill. I'm um, not going to worry about feeds and speeds and we'll call it tool 190 for here. Click OK. Turn off the stilly filter tool. What I just call it? Well, I thought I just called it 190. Here we go. OK, so here's the thing. What is the boundary that I want to 3D machine in? Well, you don't really have um, you know what, I take that back actually. I'm, in this instance, I'm not gonna use an adaptive. I'm gonna use 
Uh, let's try a parallel. So I'll switch back to that to tool. Okay, so here we go. What's the machining boundary? Well, I want to pick all of this side. You know, I could pick each little square, and I just learned a trick that I actually I think I knew but forgot. So if you hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, you can pick sides all at once. So let's see if this works. I don't know if it will, to be honest. Is that going to contain a toolpath? Okay, I think it might. And let's edit our step over in the Passes tab. Let me slow down, sorry folks. Right click on the parallel, edit. The fourth tab is Passes. So we'll do a step over, let's say of 10 thou for now. Might be too fine of a step over to be honest, but I wanna just see what the toolpath looks like before I nail it down. So if any of you said, oh, that doesn't look right, hold on a second. Um, these blue lines reflect what's called the control point of the tool. And that's not always what it looks like, especially when it comes to ball end mills and 3D toolpaths. Because if you take a look right here, we're sort of cutting up here in the top left corner, but the control point is this center line of the tip of the tool out way out here. So if we kind of jog through this, you can see um, it's not wrong, but it's not cutting enough all the way down. In other words, if we did a simulation with stock, you would see it's not cutting nearly enough of, there we go, with the, with the transparency on, you can kind of see. So the reason is we have tool containment, tool center on boundary. Take a look at this pop-up window and you can see the center of my tool isn't allowed to escape that little area there. That's weird that those boundaries changed. Hmm. So what I'll do is I'll say tool outside of boundary. That's gonna let it, the edge of the tool touch the outside of my line. And now, that's a glitch. I'll have to send this on to the Fusion folks and see why that shouldn't have happened unless I accidentally did something wrong. Because it's working here. Okay, so <laughs> way too much. Um, huh, look at that glitch. Well, I'm gonna show you how we can fix it. Uh, but regardless, this isn't really the right strategy. So how would I fix it if we wanted to use it? I'd hop back into CAM, or CAD rather, they call it model, and activate your component. It's really important. I'm gonna hit R for rectangle. So what plane do I want to sketch my rectangle on? I'm gonna sketch it right here. Now there's two ways that we could do this. We could machine these individually um, as little squares. I'm gonna just do it as one long rectangle. But again, if these were further spaced out, you could do one and pattern it over. So I'm gonna snap it to here and there. And now what you can see is I've created uh, a rectangle. I meant to do the whole thing, sorry. Um, let's start over there. R for rectangle, what plane, that plane click here and all the way down to here. Now, boom, there we go. I got my rectangle that runs along that area. If I hop back into cam, I can change the parallel uh, selection for the machining boundary to that new rectangle. Now that probably won't error out or mistake on me because see how it's a fully uh, enclosed rectangle to watch out of boundary. This should work. Now, again, this isn't really what I want. Um, and again, there's a lot, you can spend a lot of time tweaking this. One thing I would do would be, let's say it's tool center on boundary, but we'll just, so that's going to make it too small, but we'll add, say, some offset. And you can see how you can start playing with it. You look at a sim here. Um, wrap it to the end, you're starting to get something that looks a little bit better. Okay, enough of that shenanigans though. The way you would actually cut this is we would do a simple 2D, let's, see, 2D, let's look at how I did it. Yeah, 2D contour. So 2D contour, and I'm going to use a chamfer end mill. So we'll make a new one real quick. Call it a chamfer mill. 
we'll say it's two flute and 0.375 inches with no tip angle. So you can pause it there if you want to look at those settings. I'll call it tool 202 and turn off the filter, tool 202. So now here the question is, well, what's my tool path? Well, if you take a look, because I created this sketch here, I can hit, hold the Alt key and pick that bottom line. That gives me one continuous line um, along this whole pattern, which is realistically how I would machine it. The alternative being you could hold Alt down on, oops, uh, let's see here, if I turn off that sketch, so I want to hide this gray rect, uh, sketch rectangle. Up here on the left of your screen, I'll expand sketches, turn that off, and now I could hold Alt down and click each one of these. Yeah, that actually works. We'll try that. And click OK. And so there, you could change the linking. So we don't want, we kind of want to come in a straight line. So under the last tab, we would change the lead in angle to zero, maybe. Um, no lead in radius. No, actually, no. I don't want a horizontal. I only want a linear, I think. So you'd have to play with it. Um, but most importantly, if we take a look at our sim, that's going to run the tool right along there and create the correct angle. The only problem is I don't want to cut with the very tip of that tool. So if I edit this under passes, I can do chamfer tip offset. If you let the hover pop up, it's a great. Um, this is adjusting the contact point of the tool, say 0.04. And now what's awesome is you can see it's cutting with a much stronger, better part of the tool and leaving the little tip there um, off in la-la land, which is great. The last thing I'll mention, if you guys are actually cutting a lot of Picatinny's, check out AB Tool. Information is right here at the bottom of this screen. If the pop-up goes away, maybe. Um, there we go. They make a Picatinny contouring cutting tool, which is pretty darn cool. Take a look. Here, the red would be the Picatinny. And so it's going to cut on this face, the flat on that face, and it's going to cut the shoulder below it. So much, much better way. Um, you got to dial on your fees and speeds and so forth, but custom tooling isn't that crazy. I, I would really encourage you guys to look into it, especially on something like this. With that, take care, folks. See you next Friday.